All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this session is how to find, keep, and reach new customers. And I probably messed up the order of that, but you get the gist. Um, today, we're just going to talk all, all things, you know, customer retention and how to how to grow this holiday lighting business. So um, I will be looking for feedback and kind of best practices in these areas. So if any of you have things to share, just be prepared to to unmute and to share. So we appreciate your insight and any any best practices that you have to share. So with that, I'm going to share my screen here with you because we have a little PowerPoint to go along with this today. So my name is McCall Peterson. I work with Seasonal Source. I'm the marketing manager for those of you who um, weren't attending in the first session. So um, I do all the marketing for Seasonal Source. And um, so if you need anything, again, we're always looking for feedback from you guys and we're happy to provide anything that will help you guys grow your business. So I wanted to start out by just laying the ground rules here. We know you guys are the pros. We can think we know, but you guys, you guys really are living the day to day um, and you're finding these customers. But these are a few tips that we've gotten from people like you um, that we found when um, doing installations and and word of doing word of mouth and all of those things. So I'm just here to share those best practices today. But again, if you guys have anything, feel free to, to add. So the first thing I want to touch on is who do we sell to? Where do we find customers? So we originally, we like to stick to three kinds of customers. There's our residential um, customers, there's commercial, and then there's municipalities too that, that can be potential customers and clients as well. All of these, we can aim to be, you know, year after year after year customers. Some are just uh, uh, through contracts and others are just maybe a one-time deal. In residential, those people who we're targeting are nicer neighborhoods. I think Jeff touched on this earlier in his market update, but we really want to focus on higher dis disposable income families who maybe have dual uh, career uh, families and any new construction is huge. Like we heard with Evan in the panel discussion today, he lives in a very um, new construction dense area. So he is always finding new customers that way just because homes are popping up and they want holiday lights and, and they go to Evan. So these neighborhoods are usually what we like to target. And a, a few honorable men are any elderly couples. Jeff threw out some numbers about, um, I think he said there was 48 million people this year who are going to be 65 and older. So obviously there's a market there for elderly people. So we can definitely be targeting um, them. And then anyone who has the keeping up with the Joneses mentality. This is huge with holiday lighting. They see that the Joneses have it down the street and they want it on their house. So definitely targeting those types of, of individual career professionals. Like I said, those double income customers are going to be huge for holiday lighting just because they do have that disposable income and maybe they have um, some extra money that they're willing to throw at, at holiday lighting. And then there's always the Clark Griswolds and Martha Stewart's that we have to mention that really have this grandiose vision of what they want their house to look like. They're going to go all out. They're going to do the motifs. They're going to do the displays, um, the snowflakes, the lights around the windows. They're going to do everything. And they're going to every branch of every tree. And they just have this vision for what they want it to look like. And those are great um, people to target as well. So moving into the commercial side of things, then we're going to look at companies and places who really want to create this ambiance, this atmosphere for their customers. Um, they're looking to create a memorable um, interaction for their customers. So 
these types of buildings are going to be any retail shopping centers. These are huge for um, any greenery inside. Lots of them hang, you know, wreaths or do garland along the railing, the banisters, uh, lots of trees, uh, Christmas trees that get decorated. So retail shopping centers are huge. If they're outdoor, you can focus more on the strands and string lighting. Um, maybe some roof line lighting as well. And then any event spaces uh, will be big on this. That's actually what's in this picture here. It's a ski resort, but um, this is their particular event space that, that was decorated here. They've got that wreath right in the center and then lights along that main gabled peak um, and then some string lighting around that fence and some garland around the door. So it really just adds kind of a, this one was more professional, but but kind of creates that memorable atmosphere at the ski resort. Um, the next one is any bars or restaurants downtown that uh, might be popular. Uh, I also threw in some downtown associations that just wanna stand out like we saw with Martin Zorro's business, he does a lot of commercial um, installations and he said they they grow their business by, by putting up those, those wall lights um, with the strands, they grow their business 25% during that time, which is huge. So that is a great selling point to any, any business, be it shopping centers, event spaces, bars, restaurants, associations. And then I also wanted to touch on any resort. I know that uh, when you go to any resort and it's decorated for Christmas, it just feels that much more special. And I know they're, they're always trying to make a lasting impression on their customers so that they can get customers for life. So what better way to do it than, than by celebrating the holiday season with some lighting. And then last, I... I threw on here churches and religious buildings. These also can be very popular. I know here in Utah where we're located, this is big for any religious buildings that we have. They decorate all the grounds around the church buildings. It, it, it's an attraction, you know, for the whole state. People travel from even out of state to see what they do with the lights. They they wrap trees, they wrap, wrap every branch and different themes every year. So it's super fun to see and and that's a good way to get uh, your foot in the door for year after year business, uh, commercial wise. And then the next business and the or the, the next category is municipalities. So municipalities have the budgets every year. You know they have fixed budgets that they work with year after year. But uh, the tricky thing about municipalities is getting your foot in the door early. Um, they probably. Uh, depending on the municipality, but um, I would say more than likely they have their budgets fixed um, a year in advance. They know what it's going to be. They know what they have allotted for extra things like holiday lighting. So you've got to go to them a well in advance. I would say a year in advance, pitch it to them. Um, even if it's for uh, the future, it's worth getting your foot in the door there. You can see here we've We've got uh, a RGB pole tree here with a motif at the top, the star, and then a ton of spheres lining the property. You can see those uh, string trees in the back, back as well. And then um, we've lit up some bushes and through some of our um, arches as well along a pathway. So there's just fun ways to be creative with municipalities and it offers you the, the opportunity to be creative. I mean, some people like to do different animals or, you know, they can get really off the wall with some of these things. I know um, I've seen some some crazy things like a dinosaur um, at, during Christmas. So doesn't have to necessarily stick to Christmas lighting, uh, but um, offers a little bit of creativity for you as well. The next thing I want to touch on is how to reach customers. But before we do that, does anyone have any questions or comments or expertise with anything we've touched on already?
we're we're ninety five percent commercial uh, residential, but uh, we do a lot of HOAs. Homeowners okay. associations love to have their entries lit and trees wrapped, and so that's a great place to go. We found. Yeah, and, they're, and selfishly, they're also pretty simple. Yeah, they're they're kind of easy. They want basic stuff. They want it to look the same at all the entrances, so kind of efficient for us to do as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, Chuck, when you're doing those entryways and, and lighting those, do you find that homeowners then will reach out in that same HOA to do their houses? Sure, yeah. I mean, everybody's got five neighborhood Facebook pages. Yes. So they typically will ask, hey, who, who did the neighborhood? Because uh, okay. we do those earlier in the year. Um, so yeah, we'll get a lot of people asked. Uh, we also get the opposite. We also get a lot of our resident or our residential, uh, customers will refer us to do their HOA. Yeah. So it goes both ways on that. That's great. And do you do any type of advertising? Like do you do yard signs or anything to say, you know, I did this call me for a quote? Uh, we don't, we're, we have as much business as we can take right now. Um, but we, we did when we started, um, and that was a big one is to put your signs up on the HOAs you do, yeah. um, yeah. cause it'll allow you to do that. And that's great. Um, and just, people just feel that loyalty, like, well, if our HOAs is using them, we should use them also. Yeah, for sure. Well, great. Thanks for that insight. All right. We'll move into how to reach customers. So. Uh, we're going to talk today about both current and new customers. So how do you reach those current customers who maybe aren't doing holiday yet? Maybe they're doing, you know, your long hair or irrigation services, but they're not doing holidays. So how do we capitalize on the holiday lighting with them? And then how do we get new customers? So we're going to touch on, on both of those categories here. Um, so with your current customers, when we're talking holiday lighting, we've seen the most success when you lock it in early. So you you bring this up, maybe it's now in July, and you're talking to installation maybe October, November, but you're going to bring it up in July. And so you're just kind of planting that seed with them. Um, you're going to discuss, you know, any changes, upsells um, that you're going to add this year, but, but those customers who... Uh, who already do holiday lighting, you're going to lock it in because you know they're going to come back this year and you're going to talk to them now so that they're ready to come October, November. Um, current customers who are doing your other services, maybe it's a phone call now and having that conversation. So you're planning that seed. Hey, I also offer holiday lighting. I think it would look really great. We could do this. We could do that. Um and we can make sure you're all ready for your holiday season. Um, just putting in a phone call now could make the world of a difference come October, November. Um, statement stuffers and doors. We as a partner for you guys actually offer statement stuffers and door hangers that are already, they have all the messaging, they have photos, and all you have to do is put your logo on it. And then you can pass these out you know, in your, in your next statement, when you, when you send an invoice, you just throw that statement stuffer in there that just says, Hey, did you know, I also offer holiday lighting call and get a quote today. Same thing with the door hanger. You just put it on the door. Once you're done doing whatever service they currently, um, you currently offer to them and then, uh, just leave them with, uh, a little bit of a note plants that seed, like I said, and just, gets the word out about this side of your business. As far as new customers go, something that's huge is, is going with an, a neighborhood that you're familiar with already. So maybe you do another service in this neighborhood or you're doing holiday lighting in that neighborhood already. And they're, they're specifically areas that fit the criteria that we talked about earlier. So it's newer builds or it's nicer, higher income neighborhoods, uh, residential. So um, maybe it's elderly people and things like that. So making sure that, that it's an area that you're familiar with, but also it fits that criteria that we talked about. 
Um, with new customers, we found success with postcards and geo-targeting. So again, this is something that we offer to you guys. Um, all of these resources I'm talking about are available on our website. And if we have time at the end of this presentation, I'll show you where, where you can access those on our website. But uh, we have postcards, again, that are already curated. You just have to put your logo on them and then you'll send them out. But geotargeting has been something that we have found to be very, very successful with contractors. So you'll pick a zip code, you can pick a city. Um, the The targeted area can be as, as centralized as you want it to be, or it can be very broad as well. Um, but you're just paying basically what it what it costs to print those postcards and then the the mailing fee um so we found this to be very successful just a, a hey i also offer holiday lighting don't worry about putting your lights up this year i'll do it for you kind of a thing so um and then they call for a quote and and we found a large success with with that Another thing that was kind of touched on in our panel discussion today is just word of mouth referrals. Some people have formal programs where they do this, where they offer customers a certain discount if their uh, name is given as a referral, or um, sometimes it's just, like we said, word of mouth, people talk, and, and you're lucky enough to get another customer because of that. So referrals are huge. Something that we'll touch on later with referrals is just making sure that that people will want to refer you. So so what goes into that with your crews? Making sure that they clean up, making sure that you're working in a timely manner and uh, doing all the things so that you're a respectable company. And then last thing I wanted to touch on was digital marketing to get new customers. So. Social media in this day and age can be pretty big uh, as far as getting new customers go. The first thing that, that many people do when hearing of a new company is, is they turn to social media to find out you know, what it is they do and what they can do. So having a few posts on there, I'm not saying you have to post every day about this, but just having a profile that, that showcases exactly what you do um, maybe some some jobs that you're really proud of. Um, you can run ads uh, if you're looking to generate more leads or reach out to certain certain areas or certain uh, neighborhoods. You can run specific ads for that 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 are similar messaging to our uh, postcard store hangers and statement stuffers. And then. Any time that you can share anything that your customers post about what you do, if they're sharing, hey, look at my awesome new lights I just got, that that would definitely be something that you want to post and share to your account. So um, social media can be a really big factor as far as new customers go. And then I threw on here maximizing Google and SEO. Um, Google can be big as far as reviews go. So really capturing those reviews from your happy customers. Uh, lots of people turn to Google as well. When they hear of your business, they're going to throw your name into Google and then it's going to pop up with your review. So if you have multiple five-star reviews, that's going to obviously look really good for your company and um, they're going to be more likely to reach out and and become a customer if you have those reviews. So anything you can do to get those reviews uh, is helpful. McCall. Yeah. I was just going to say something, an easy way to get reviews is if your customer is, um, telling you what a great job you did. Uh, something you can say is like, thanks so much. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave me a review. And then that's an easy way to get those five-star reviews. Yeah, that's a great addition, Liz. Thanks. Does anyone have any experience with Google reviews or social media or uh, maybe someone here can speak to, you know, how are you capitalizing and finding new customers? Is it strictly word of mouth? Uh, what are you guys doing there? We are mostly word of mouth and uh, I'll, the best thing we found is uh, we just offer a straight $50 credit yeah. um, for any anybody who ends up doing business with us. And we make that unlimited. 
So if if you re you know refer ten people, that's five hundred bucks. Well, if your install is four hundred, then I'll give them cash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or or give them a credit for the next year. We kind of make that unlimited. And I've got a couple of people that actually try to get their lights for free every year by getting referrals. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great incentive for them. Anybody else with referrals or, you know, Google reviews, social media? Okay. All right, so next is, great, you've got a new customer. How do you get them interested? What's the message? Um, maybe you're trying to still get new customers. What's the right message here? Why would they want holiday lighting? Well, I'll tell you. Um, so when you first do this sales call, you want to make sure that you're appealing to the type of customer that you're you're calling. So for each customer, it's going to be a little different. I picked three that I'm going to give you examples for, but those professional double income households message is going to be completely different from the Martha Stewart Clark Griswold type household. So um, your professional double income households is going to be the convenience. They're busy. They're working. Um, they have a full career. They're gone maybe eight to five every day. So you're going to take that that time that they don't have and you're going to put up their lights for them. So it's super convenient for them and you're going to capitalize on that when you're talking to them. As far as the Martha Stewart's and the Clark Griswolds, you're going to create a design that will wow their neighbors. Everyone will want to be like them. Uh, their house will be the talk of the town. Everyone's going to want to drive by and see it and you're going to handle all of that. They can have a hand in the design with you and you're going to make sure that you include all of those factors you know, that they want. Um, as far as the elderly people go, they don't need to get on the roof. That is a major risk for them at their age. And so you're going to take care of that for them. So they don't have to worry about becoming injured or anything like that. So you're going to really emphasize that they don't need to get on the roof and that they can have fun lights for their grandkids when they come to visit, because more likely than not, they're going to be hosting um, events at their house during the holiday season. And how fun is it that they'll have lights that their grandkids are going to love and enjoy. So those are some examples just as far as appealing to the type of customer. As far as, you know, broadening our scope, as far as marketing goes, if you're not targeting a certain demographic, you're just gonna really emphasize the professionalism and excitement of the holidays. So there's no hassle involved. You're gonna take care of all the hassle for them. The design is gonna have that wow factor that everyone's gonna want, uh, kind of a keeping up with the Joneses type message. Uh, you're going to emphasize the safety of staying on the ground. They don't have to get up on a ladder. There's no injuries. Uh, you guys are the professional, so you will handle that. Uh, the storage of the lights, if that's something that you offer, uh, as far as when the lights are taken down, you'll store them. That can be huge, so they don't have to clear out you know, their garage for a space or find a spot for the lights. You'll take care of that. And then you're going to sum it all up together at the end. You're going to experience the joy of the holidays without any hassle. You're just going to touch on that, that point about it not being a hassle. It's going to be so super convenient for them. Um, so that's kind of the messaging that we found to be the most successful when it's just kind of a blanket audience. You're not specifically targeting anyone. We touch on, you know, all four of those categories are categories that will appeal to any type of customer. And then wanted to touch on keeping loyal customers. So this is, I kind of hinted at this in the beginning, but wanted to touch on professionality and communication, making sure that you're always exuding these um, and that your crew members are exuding these qualities as well. So professionality uh, can be implemented into your, into your design as well. So you want to make sure that you're asking those right questions about, you know, what's their goal for this, this design of their house? What do they want to feature? Is there anything that they want to highlight? 
what's maybe a theme they're going for. And to go along with that, uh, we do offer a lookbook is what we call it. And we have, you know, traditional designs, we have very colorful designs. And this is a great tool for you guys to use when you're designing um, and really trying to sell different unique designs. So we have one that's called Winter Wonderland that really focus on cool white and blues. And that's the theme throughout the house. Um, so just making sure that you're asking those questions, that you have all the right tools and you're tailoring the design to their house site and needs. So you can see here in this picture, we tailored this to the homeowner. They wanted um, an emphasis on their entryway. And then since there wasn't snow in this in this particular area around Christmas time, we use these yard stakes, um, these light stakes to really emphasize that curbing and the perimeter of their yard. And they wanted kind of a classic timeless feel. Um, so we use warm white all around um, C7 bulbs on the roof, C7 on the ground. And then we threw in a little bit of flare here with our rope light around that entryway. Uh, just to create kind of a focal point there. And then we have the garland as well. And then to keep it traditional, we've got the wreaths with the red bows here. So not too much flair with this house, but you can see we really tailored it to the design of this house with uh, different unique features while still keeping it professional. Um, the next one is presentations and proposals. So we always want to make sure that that these these are an extension of your business, these proposals, these presentations. So whoever's doing these, um, it needs to blend in with the rest of your company and what you guys um, really advertise as far as your your business goes. So um, just making sure that everyone in your team is on the same page as far as what to include, what's the standard it goes all the way down to, you know, how you dress and, and things like that. So just making sure that you're covering those bases with your crew as well. And then the last thing I'm going to touch on is a quick and thorough crew cleanup. Um, this goes, and I should have in, included installation as well. You want to make sure that you are meeting as a team beforehand or that you have a sketch that's very, very thorough and just calls everything out so that when you get on the job site, there's no questions. On our panel today, some of them mentioned, you know, the lights will be labeled. We have someone that that goes through and actually screws the lights in the strand before we get there. And another guy mentioned that they take a Sharpie and they they black out that, that peak light so that they know um, where to start and they can kind of start right in the middle and then send guys out from there. And so there's lots of ways to be efficient. And I'm sure there's plenty of other best practices in order to be efficient that way. But you want to make sure that your crew is professional because they are also um, going to be ones who are interacting with the customers and, again, representing your business on the site. So you want to make sure that the installation goes smoothly and then as well as installation, the cleanup process. So whether that be cleanup on installation day or the takedown um, of the holiday lights at the end of the season, uh, you want to make sure that, that that's very clear that um, what your standards are as a company. Um, and then next is communication. So um, I threw this on here just because there's another breakout session today about leasing and contracts. So if there is an opportunity for a contract or a leasing option, you want to be very, very clear about what that contract includes. What are the terms? Uh, what does what does the contract look like? Um, how much is it going to cost? Things like that, that people are going to have questions on. I don't think you can over communicate in this situation when, when there's contracts involved. Um, it will just benefit you to kind of over communicate there. Um, well, another thing that I don't think you can over communicate on is about installation and takedown days. Um, the customers are going to be super excited to get their lights put up, but they're also going to be excited to have them taken down. Um, people get antsy once the season's over, come January 1st, they're itching to get their lights down. So 
you can't over communicate about installation and take down days. And then again, there always are scenarios where there was a hiccup here. And so you're going to have to push their date back or, or they're going to, you're going to have to move them up. So in those situations, it's important to let the customer know where you stand as far as scheduling goes. Let's see. And that is, I'm going to wrap and I'm sure you guys about sick of um, hearing me talk. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, any, any best practices on how to find and reach new customers, anything like that, that I didn't touch on or anything that you really want to emphasize that maybe I did touch on. So was there anything I missed? Let's, let's start there. You mentioned communication. I think that's probably the most important thing. Like coming a day late is not a big deal if they know you're coming a day late right. um, or taking them down two days later than normal because of rain. Most customers are fine as long as you let them know that. So communication is big. And we found probably the most important thing is communication. And right behind that is uh, do anything to fix it. Like kind of part of our presentation is our guys are not perfect. They try to be, but they're not. And if you find something that's not perfect, we will come fix it and then to stand by that. And we even tell them if you have one bulb out and you really want it fixed, I will come fix it. <clears throat> and I think that really helps with retention feeling like they're the most important customers. So I think that's huge. Yeah, that is awesome. Chuck, since, since you've been talking with me today, um, I'm just going to pick on you as far as, you know, getting your crew up to scale and up to speed on, you know, what you expect from them as far as when they're on the job site, is that just a conversation you have beforehand? Um, how do you, how do you do, how do you address that with your crews? Uh, a couple of ways. One, we, we kind of do it. I have a written expectations. Like here's the, here's the things we value as a business. So as employees, here's the things I need you to value. Um, but then I also spend a full, at least one day, usually two days with them. <clears throat> um, and the first day we will do two houses. <laughs> we will do my house, um, and like a neighbor's house and we, it'll take, it might take two or three hours just to do one house because we're going through every little piece meticulously on expectations. And then we lucked into a deal. We have, a a charity we work with, they have 15 homes on a property. Uh, so what we have traded is we volunteer, we do all their stuff for free, but that gives me 15 homes to walk through with our crews and do 15 different homes that day. And they're small and they're easy, but it gives them repetition and time to hear me talk about what's important and what to look for and what the right way to do it is. So I think doing it with them has been huge. Yeah. And that that, that prevents me from having to go back to fix things if I teach them the right way to, to begin with. Uh, a point about uh, fixing anything um, is, is key. That's what sells your job, sells your company, sells your person. Um, we have a service truck that starts running on Thanksgiving and, uh, we don't want one bulb out, one bulb out of place, one leaning. So, um, I don't want them that way on my house and I don't want that way on my customer's house. So they know all they have to do is pick the phone up and we'll be there within a day or two, or if they have a specific party, you know, we're on our way right then. So if that, that's, that's key to selling your job. Yeah, that is great. Um, for those of you, sorry, I went on mute for a second because I 